In the last five or six videos, we had taken a tour of uh, the basics of electrolysis, the electrolysis of dilute and concentrated aqueous substances, electrolysis of molten substances, and we took a look at a couple of applications of electrolysis in industry. So what I'd like to do now is to draw a mind map summary of all that we've learned so far on electrolysis. So let's start with electrolysis. That's my main idea in the center. So the general idea with electrolysis is that I will have electrodes connected to terminals of a cell. So I'm going to have my cell here. Positive terminal and a negative terminal. And on the positive terminal, what I'll have is the non-metal being attracted to it and the metal being attracted to the negative terminal since the metal is positively charged. So the metal will receive electrons from the negative terminal of the battery while the nonmetal will give up its electrons to the positive terminal of the battery. And when that happens, we say that the nonmetal is oxidized since it lost electrons, and the metal is reduced because it gained electrons. And of course, it's important to note that the electrolyte, let's write that down here, the electrolyte will have to be in either a molten or aqueous state because it is only when it's molten or aqueous that the ions can flow and carry electricity whereas if we had a solid lattice the atoms or ions would all be fixed in place and that wouldn't work and we can't have a covalent substance either because a covalent substance is uncharged and hence it cannot carry charges. So electricity cannot flow. So we'll, we started with the electrolysis using inert electrodes. Where we had two possibilities, the simpler one being the electrolysis of molten substances and I'll denote the anode using positive circle around it and cathode using negative circle around it and at the anode what we saw was that the non-metal was discharged, whereas at the cathode, the metal was discharged. So it was fairly straightforward for a molten substance. Well, for an aqueous substance, we had to do a bit of comparison. We had to look at the reactivity series or the discharge series. And in that case, we had a dilute solution and a concentrated solution. So we had two possibilities here. So dilute anode, cathode, concentrated anode cathode. 
For the concentrated solution, we had always chosen the less reactive one. So here's the reactivity series again. Most reactive to least reactive, most reactive to least reactive. And we would always choose the less reactive one. While for a dilute solution, at the cathode, we would choose the less reactive metal. While at the anode, because of the high concentration of hydroxide ions, so even though, for example, even though we would expect you know, chlorine to, be, to come out, the uh, hydroxide is actually discharged and it forms oxygen. The next thing we did was that we moved on to the purification of copper, which in that case we didn't use in inert electrodes anymore. So let's call this purif purifying. In fact, we could purify a whole host of of metals, so I'm not going to limit it to just copper. I have my anode, cathode, and just write that short for the electrolyte or the solution that should be in it. At the anode, I had put the impure metal, that's the way we set it up, and at the cathode we put the pure metal because it will then attract you know, the metal ions which are positive. And the solution had to be a solution of the metal we are trying to purify, and it could be metal something, metal nitrate, metal sulfate, so I just write metal something. The impure metal we saw would dissolve in the solution. We had remember we had copper on the anode and it dissolved, leaving behind the impurities at the bottom of the beaker. And at the cathode we had the pure metal deposited. Remember the um, cathode just got thicker and thicker with the pure metal and we had hence um, extracted or rather purified the metal. The next thing we looked at was the plating of one metal onto another metal to prevent it from corrosion, improve the way it looks, etc. And in particular we looked at the plating of nickel spoon with silver, but in reality there are a whole host of uh, other metals we could play it with, so I'll just try and leave this as general as possible. So we have the anode, cathode, and we need to decide what we use for the electrolyte, the solution. So at the anode, we would put the um, the metal that we're trying to coat with. So this would be metal coating. And at a cathode, we'd put the item we wish to coat. So the spoon was here, for example and the metal ions would be attracted to the spoon because it's negative and the metal ions are positive and then the metal ions would be discharged and be deposited on the spoon. And the solution had to be a solution of the metal that we are coating with. Um, in, the, in our example we use silver so it has to be metal something. Right? So it could be sulfate, nitrate, 
And finally, as a last example of um, applications of electrolysis in industry, we looked at how to extract aluminum. Now, aluminum in its um, state in nature doesn't exist as pure aluminum because it reacts with the oxygen in the air to form bauxite, aluminum oxide. So we need some way of separating the aluminum from the oxygen before it actually becomes useful for uh, applications. So once again, anode, cathode, and our solution. So the anode was a carbon electrode. The cathode was also carbon electrode. And in our solution, we had the bauxite. And in addition, we had used cryolite to lower the melting point and also to improve its electrical conductivity. So the cryolite is to improve conductivity and together the cryolite the aluminum oxide had a melting point of about 900 degrees Celsius so that saved us some money on the energy to um, melt the aluminum oxide because we need it in a molten state for the ions to flow to conduct electricity. At the anode oxygen was released and at the cathode we had the liquid of aluminum that we wanted from the start. So this carbon we saw attacks the electrode. So the carbon electrode at the anode needed to be replaced from time to time because it reacts the oxygen to form carbon dioxide. So this summary concludes our short series of videos on electrolysis.